by uh, Laura, Regard Laura, Laura Pearl. Do you know Laura Pearl? No, she's, I do. She, I, she's, she happens to be my, my son's girlfriend, but she's the executive director of something called Flip the Vote. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so she, I was telling her what I was doing today, and I, I think she said to reach out to say hi to you or something. Oh, that's like that. really nice. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. I just want to make sure I've got your bio here, that I've got my Facebook open so we can see the if there's any questions coming in there. Um, let's see. We're not quite, oh, we are live on Facebook already. Well, there's people kind of trickling in. And we usually have uh, many more than what I'm seeing right now. So it's interesting. I don't know if people are just traveling, trying to get out of the heat or what the heck's going on. But um, usually we have a lot more folks joining our um, thing. So I'll just give it a couple more minutes. And if you are here joining us today, please, by all means, um, feel free to put your name and where you're from into the chat. Make sure that you change the little blue button on the bottom so that it says to everyone and not just the hosts and panelists. Uh, and I'm really glad that the few of you that are here are here. So I'll go ahead and get started with my little spiel here. And then I'm going to turn it over to you, Howard. Uh, so hi, everybody. And thanks so much for joining us at Secular AZ today. Um, we are a nonprofit organization focused on protecting the Constitution and the separation of church and state. And we've been doing it now for over a decade. We have great programming, uh, our Friday updates from all kinds of speakers. You name it, uh, you name the field and, and they'll come and talk to us. And it's really been a great opportunity for me to be able to really dive deep into some of these topics. As you all know, we're talking about our uh, unhoused neighbors and, and the housing crisis that we're facing right now. And then after that, we're going to kind of be talking about what I like to call amosexuals and, you know, people who kind of worship guns um, and, and that connection. So uh, next Friday, we're actually going to be speaking with a special guest, Sheila Kruger, with uh, the atheist or with atheists helping the homeless. And we'll continue to talk about unhoused neighbors for a little while. Um, all this at a time where, right, we are, uh, we had 30 days of over 110 degrees, and it's supposed to be over 110 degrees Today, tomorrow, I think till Monday, there's a there's a heat advisory. So uh, while we always do need your financial support to do the work that we do, I'd like to encourage you all to you know show Phoenix the the atheist helping the homeless homeless some love today. Um, but today we're going to be talking to Howard Epstein. He is a Phoenix-based Bank of America executive who specializes in real estate assets and sales. He is the board president of Arizona Housing Inc., a nonprofit that works closely with homeless shelters and other related providers to work toward creating permanent, affordable, and supportive housing for people experiencing homelessness. He founded the Arizona Housing Fund in 2019 to help provide affordable housing that asks people to round up or donate a dollar at a cash register or asks home buyers and sellers to donate $25 when a home is sold. Uh, he's been working on the homeless and housing insecurity problem for over 25 years using the private sector. So I am so excited uh, about all the knowledge you're going to be dropping on us today, Howard. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hand it on over to you. Thank you so much. And um, uh, we're, I'm going to do a PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to run through that. Uh, I really would like the um, this conversation to be as interactive as possible. So I'll, I'll take as many questions and um, discussion points you anybody in the group wants to have. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to answer uh, any questions. Uh, before we get to the PowerPoint, let me just say uh, thank you. Um, so. One of the things uh, I've learned by battling this homeless and housing issue for 25, 30 years is that with my own eyes, I, I've, I've gotten to see when a new project comes online, um, uh, where it's say, whether it's 30 units, 50 units, 200 units, whatever, where you can actually see people moving out of emergency shelters and into permanent supportive housing. Uh, where you can actually see the system work, where, where the emergency shelters uh, start having people leave and it opens up new beds for people. That, that's what we need to have happening more and more. Kind of, it's stuck right now. So um, that was the genesis of, of why I actually started this fund. 
Um, th this is the, uh, what I would say, if you, if you are interested in uh, what we're doing at the Arizona Housing Fund, uh, you can either visit our website, but probably the best way to stay uh, up to date on all the things we've got going on, whether it's new partners, new grants, uh, data points, um, people who are um, battling these issues, follow us on whatever social media you like. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, uh, we have really good content that we post uh, and um, it's, um, it's, just, it's great. So please, if you're interested, um, do follow us. I'm going to try to um, really answer three questions today in our short time together. Um, one is how bad is our problem? Uh, and these are all data points. Two, why do we have this problem? Why is it a growing problem? And three, what is the most responsible solution? Um, so next slide, please. Um, thank you. So here's, here's a few, how bad is our problem? Um, here's a few data points um, and they're all sad. So whether it's uh, how many public school students throughout the course of a year, some of this is dated, but it's, it's gotten, if anything, worse. How many public school students are, are homeless? How many people die from homelessness? How many people need housing? The one data point that I and our fund particularly focus on uh, is um, it's, it's something called the HMIS list that every county has to keep. Any county who receives any kinds of HUD funding from the federal government has to keep an HMIS list, which stands for a Homeless Management Information System. It's a active list, it's real time. And it basically says, if you are on that list, you don't have housing, you don't have permanent housing and you want it. Okay, so if you think of affordable housing and the spectrum of, of affordable housing, all the way to the left, you have chronically homeless people who have lived on the streets for years, if not decades. Uh, those people probably aren't going to come off the streets anytime soon. Um, all the way to people that I just described who are temporarily homeless or temporarily unsheltered, uh, to people who are sheltered, but just temporarily, all the way, if you keep going through you know, workforce housing and something less than market rate uh, rental housing. Um, I'm focused on the people who uh, they're vulnerable, they don't have housing and they want it. So uh, there's 13 to 14,000 people in our state right now who are on that list. Uh, 7,500 to 8,000 are in Maricopa County, a couple thousand in, in, in Southern Arizona. Uh, and the rest in Northern Arizona and scattered around. So keep that in mind. Those are the people we're trying to help. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just a little cartoon that um, I guess what I would say is there's a lot of reasons why people become homeless uh, and the solutions to why they become homeless are really difficult, uh, whether it's drug addiction or mental illness, uh, domestic violence. Okay. There's not easy solutions to those problems, but what is an easy solution is we have more people than housing and we need more housing. I, another visual I would ask you to keep in your mind, which for me always makes the case uh, when, I'm, when I'm talking about uh, helping the most vulnerable. When you have more people than housing, um, it's the most vulnerable who get hurt. So if you think of the game musical chairs, and if there's eight chairs and 10 people jumping, running around the chairs, when, when the music stops, they have to sit down. If of those 10 people, you have eight normal, regular people, and you have one person who is on crutches in a cast, and one person who is blind, who is not going to get a chair when the music stops? It's likely to be those two people, otherwise, in this example, the most vulnerable. Keep that in mind because that's just a that's 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 a uh, philosophy that goes to every city around this country. When you have more people than housing, it's the most vulnerable who really get hurt. Next slide, please. Okay, why do we have this growing pro problem? One, if you look at that first bullet, and I have bullets under that, every population of homelessness is growing. Okay, fastest being elderly, seniors. 
Uh, that is the fastest growing homeless population we have in the state. Uh, veterans, uh, there were 400 veterans last month who had vouchers that they couldn't use because there was no housing for them. Uh, people with mental illness, disabled, people in crisis, every one of those is growing. Um, that's the problem. Uh, and there's not enough housing to keep up with those growing populations too. As I talked about earlier, all the shelters are completely full, whether you're an emergency shelter uh, like CAS in downtown Phoenix, uh, a temporary shelter, or even transitional shelters. And there's more transitional shelters coming online, but they're all full. Uh, and the reason why they're full is because there's no other new uh, uh, units for those people to move into. Uh, and that's again, why I, I started this fund and my attempt is to bring more housing units online. So as long as we have a severe shortage of, of supportive housing and low income housing, uh, we're going to have a problem that's going to continue. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, so the solution is more housing, the Arizona Housing Fund. This is a little dated and I apologize for it. We've now raised close to $2 million. We're only three and a half years old. Um, uh, we, um, we've now, we're almost over, up to 5,000 donors. We've awarded nearly a million and a half, uh, or excuse me, a million, uh, 1.7 in grants. Um, and and um, we keep um, bringing on new partners, new revenue sources, uh, and I'm going to talk more about our, our goals and what the future looks like for the fund. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so permanent supportive housing. I'll just spend a, a, a few seconds on this. So, you know, what is permanent supportive housing? So it is, it is your basic uh, apartment building or repurposed hotel but there's wraparound service there, wraparound services at the facilities to help the clientele. So whether it's uh, community bridges for, for mental illness, it's healthcare navigators, it's um, veteran navigators to help with vets with their benefits, uh, employment services. Uh, and so the, the, the problem with, with uh, a lot of these residences, they, they they would not do well if they go to just an apartment that didn't have a lot of these services. Um, again, from the outside, it looks like any other apartment building. From the inside, it has a little bit more of a, a, a freshman dormitory feel where you there's somebody or, or people at the front desk seeing who's coming and going. Um, and um, I, I, uh, again, everybody signs leases, okay? Everybody pays rent and everybody has to follow the rules. Okay, now a lot of the rent is subsidized, whether it's through uh, voucher systems, uh, uh, um, but, but, but that's, that's how these go. So, it, it, and the biggest difference is the rents can be five or 600 a month and sometimes less versus you know, a, a market rent, which could be at this point uh, 1500. So it's, it's affordable uh, for these kinds of residents. Uh, next slide, please. This is one of the most important slides. Um, these are the nonprofits around our state uh, who do a fantastic job of building, owning, managing, running um, the kind of housing we're talking about. Uh, I travel around the country looking at how other nonprofits do it, how other states do it, cities do it. Uh, the nonprofits you see here uh, are just fantastic. Uh, they all, they, not, they, they may have different clientele they serve, whether it's veterans only or elderly or uh, families, uh, single men and women, et cetera. And some of them are geographic based, but we are lucky to have this group of um, nonprofits. And these are the nonprofits we're advocating for. In fact, we've already given out um, eight grants and I'll talk about those again, but it's, uh, most of those have gone to the, the, the groups you see here. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the, the really creative um, part of our fund is something we call the escrow donation program. So imagine uh, when you go to the grocery store and you're paying your bill and you hear a grocery store say, uh, at the cashier says, would you like to donate a dollar to whatever their uh, uh, charity is that they're advocating for that month or that quarter. Uh, it's the same thing, except it's when you're buying, selling a house or refinancing anything at an escrow company. Um, they ask, do you want to donate $25, a tax deductible um, 
donation to the Arizona Housing Fund. Uh, so if you look at the 5,000 donations we received to date, I would say 95% um, of those have come from our escrow donation program. It's endorsed by the Arizona Association of Realtors. They are our biggest fans. They are the rock stars. It's the realtors of this community who are really promoting this and pushing it. Some companies, it's part of their culture where all the brokers give, the company matches, et cetera. You have home builders who do the same thing. They offer it to their uh, buyers and the, and the home builder will match. Um, so that is, the, that is the, the, the basis for most of the dollars that come in. Uh, and it's a sustainable program that we think will go on for, for decades. The far right where it says rental community donation program, that's one we just rolled out. We hope to have uh, a, a really much larger rollout uh, sometime next year. But that is where um, anytime there's a leasing application that comes into an apartment, a rental community, that a $5 commitment from that um, application is to the Arizona Housing Fund. There was a, a, a company called Next Metro who, who has rental communities. They were the guinea pig to roll it out. Uh, and it's been fantastic. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot, $5 per rental application, but if you multiply that by the hundreds of thousands of units around our state, it would be millions of dollars coming in on an annual basis to the fund. We think we're going to get massive rollout from our, our um, uh, apartment uh, friends. Uh, the, we're endorsed by the Arizona Multi-Housing Association. That's their membership organization. And this will also be a big game changer because uh, if we, as we know, the, the rental community um, industry needs some goodwill right now because their rental increases are causing a lot of these problems. So they're going to try to be part of the solution through the Arizona Housing Fund. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I, I think I can skip. This is a little more, um, by the way, it's a one page uh, sheet, the escrow donation sheet uh, that is uh, realtors pull right off of the um, uh, Arizona Association of Realtors website where they get all their other uh, forms from. Um, and so um, very simple, very fast very effective. Next slide, please. Okay, where's our fund managed? Uh, we are at the Arizona uh, Community Foundation. So the iconic uh, multi-billion dollar uh, charitable uh, uh, donor advised fund facility here in Arizona. They have multiple offices around the state. Uh, the benefit uh, is twofold. One, they are a partner in this deal. Uh, and I here's what I can tell you. Uh, we don't have staff at the Arizona Housing Fund. We are a fund managed at the foundation. So we, we use their 501c3 to make any donations tax deductible, but because we have no staff and it's just people volunteering like me and, and our other advisory committee members and other people, uh, any expenses that the fund has um, is picked up by generous donors. So that means a hundred cents of every dollar we raise is going to this cause. I can't think of another charity that can make that claim. And a lot of people find that very attractive as you, as, as conscientious people look to see how much overhead some of these charities have. Um, it's a little scary. Um, we're committed to keeping a hundred cents of every dollar we raise going to the cause. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this is our uh, advisory committee. These are the people on this committee who um, decide where the money goes to and, and, and um, when it goes to uh, which projects. The people on here uh, have decades of experience uh, in the housing and homeless and uh, development um, industries. Uh, we have actually uh, two people um, on here that were both previous Arizona Department of Housing directors. Uh, we're probably the only charity that has two past directors on our committee. Um, a lot of you probably know Sarah Liguori. Um, she recently has gone to ACF and she's on our, um, she's on our advisory committee and she's a great resource for us. And so um, everybody, virtually everybody on here has been with us since day one. And um, it's a, just a great group of people who care about our cause and our effort. And uh, I'm very thankful to have them on our team. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so these were the 2022 grants um, that we awarded. Um, let me talk about um, where we've, where our fund has come in handy, if you will. Um, for most of the projects, 
that are being built that are doing the kind of housing we're talking about, low income, permanent supportive housing, really helping the most vulnerable. Um, let's face it, most of it has federal funding, whether it be from HUD, uh, the state level ADOH, uh, county money, uh, even some city money. Uh, but what's happened is so many of these projects, the budgets and performers were built, you know, 18 months, sometimes two years uh, prior. And what's happened is you get the um, funding obligation from the um, government, let's just say the ADOH, Arizona Department of Housing, but because of inflation and all, all these other things, it's, it, it's now a shortfall. So a perfect example is uh, the first one, Arizona Housing Inc. This is a 50 unit uh, hotel that they're repurposing um, for housing seniors and veterans. Um, it was a kind of a crappy hotel, 29th Street in Van Buren, uh, but it's being turned into a really nice a housing facility. It's right on a bus line so people can, uh, who do need it to go to work have it. Uh, but, but the original project funding was $7 million by Maricopa County. Uh, when it came time to do the work, uh, the budget became 7.3 and they came to us and said, we need $300,000 to complete this. And our fund made, uh, wrote the check for that. We're seeing that so many of these on here, it's the same exact thing. We just, so these are the four we made in 2022. I need to update my slide, but we made four more uh, this year. Central Arizona Shelter Services is doing 134 long-term transitional housing for seniors uh, in um, Phoenix. Housing for Hope, it's a Catholic Charities uh, division. They're doing a 20 unit uh, project to uh, house formerly homeless people in Page, Arizona. Uh, housing Solutions for Northern Arizona, we just gave them a grant for something called JoJo's Place. It's trans long-term transitional housing. That's gonna be for 44 units of people who were uh, previously homeless in Flagstaff. And then finally, uh, Native American Connections. Uh, we just gave them a grant for Osborne Point, which is gonna be 48 units uh, of housing people who are previously uh, chronically homeless and disabled adults. Similar story for all these. They needed a little more money than what their funding was for. Uh, and we've been able to fill that void in the capital stack. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so we have some pretty broad goals. Uh, we hope that over the next 10 to 15 years, uh, we're actually gonna raise a hundred million dollars. And um, I, at first I, I used to say, it's just such a, a bold uh, idealistic goal. Uh, the more I talk to groups who are interested in participating in our fund and being um, investing in our fund and being part of it, uh, I, I think it's achievable. Um, the, one of the um, inspirations behind why I started this is if any of you have ever shopped at PetSmart for your, your pets, uh, they, have a, they have a rental roundup program, I mean, excuse me, a, a, a retail round, roundup program. So when you're checking out at the cash register, you can round up. Um, they've raised $400 million over the last 25 years that they've given to various pet charities for their cash register donation program, all just donations. So I look at that and I looked at that and said, why can't we do that for our own citizens in the state of Arizona. So that's kind of what I always fall back on saying, you know, if they can do that, we can do that. And we're doing it. So it's really exciting. Next slide, please. Okay, so in summary, let me just say this, we are, there's a lot of people trying to do a lot of things around this, this issue. We are narrowly focused on three things. And that's it. One, uh, we're going to provide grants they're not loans, they're grants to nonprofits, successful nonprofits who are really good at doing this kind of housing. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it has to be for bringing additional units online. Okay, so it can't, it, while, while they might have maintenance issues for some of their existing ones, we need more housing and we need it fast. So if you are one of those nonprofits and you're working on a project to bring housing online, you meet our criteria. And our third piece is we are trying to help the most vulnerable. While workforce housing is an issue, I'm not we're not trying to solve that problem. We're trying to help the person who doesn't have housing today. They're living in a shelter. Worse, they're living in their car. They're living on Aunt Seema's couch. 
Those are the people we're trying to help. Um, this is a private sector uh, effort. So there's no government involved. It's all voluntary. It's all through donations. We're seeing tangible results from this. And again, as I mentioned earlier, 100 cents of every dollar that we raise goes to the cause. Next slide, please. Okay, you can just keep scrolling. These are just some of our um, uh, partners that we've had who are with us. Here's just a couple of quotes. Um, these are Mayor um, um, Jones Service Director of Arizona Department of Housing, uh, Doug Ducey, Governor. Uh, we've actually had a meeting with Governor Hobbs about this. So we, we have gr great support for the fund. Everybody knows that this is an all hands on deck effort, right? Government can't do it all, can't do it all. Concerned citizens like us to um, help come in and be part of the solution. Next slide, please. And I that could be it. That might be it. Okay, so with that, uh, that is my PowerPoint presentation and I'd love to open it up for questions. Okay, we did have a question early on and I, I'm, it's gonna slip my mind the name of the program that, you, that she was referring to. Um, and maybe Kathleen, if you can remember, she was asking, uh, would a resident be evicted if they were found using drugs? So um, there, there are, yeah, yes, there are rules at these places you must follow. Just like any other, you have to sign a lease. And if you break the rules of that lease, um, you will be asked to leave. Uh, I will say this though, uh, there's a project downtown Phoenix called uh, 209 West Jackson. It's 300 units uh, filled with the sort of residents we just spoke about. Uh, I, I go there a lot. Um, I will tell you, I've never been to that campus where there wasn't an AA meeting taking place at the facility, at least 30 people in that in their room. Uh, and those are mostly residents. So there, there are people there who are trying to deal with their addiction issues. And again, yes, they, everybody knows um, that if you're going to stay at these places, um, you got to sign a lease. You got to follow the rules. The one other interesting thing about that project I just mentioned, because it's large, 300 units, average room in there is very small for 235 square feet. Okay, it's called a single uh, resident occupancy. So think about it. it's a bed and a little tiny kitchen and a bathroom. Um, part of the services you get when you pay rent there is a weekly cleaning. Now, the residents view that as that's a really great amenity but the staff does it so they can see what's going on with the residents. Okay, so they go in there, is, is, is Johnny using drugs? Is Sarah doing things she shouldn't be doing? So it's one of those things where uh, in that particular project, uh, it's a really cool thing they do. Again, they, 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 it's, it's a cleaning service that's, that, that is, but a lot of it is the staff. Um. Looks like uh, Howard is having some connectivity issues here. He is completely frozen for me. Um, the comment that I was gonna make uh, as he started talking about them having AA meetings is, and I mean, I'm sure folks will let me know if they can hear me, right? Can y'all hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, good, thanks. <laughs> um, and maybe if we could send Howard a message too and let him know that he's frozen currently, he might not even know it. Anyway, um, AA meetings, I bet we have some people on this call right now who would perhaps like to see, uh, you know, a secular uh, a substance abuse meeting there. I wonder if there might be opportunities. That's what I wanted to ask him to see if there might be opportunities for uh, other secular uh, recovery groups to get in. Uh, thanks for putting that there. Uh, the cleaning, Mars says, uh, not sure how I feel about those cleaning services. Uh, I'm curious, you know, I mean, it, do, it it is a little bit big brotherish, I guess, right? Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, poor Howard. Hopefully he can come back and join us because I certainly am no expert on housing. <laughs> That's why I had him here. Um, 
Let's see, Mary says Old Pueblo Community Services does not require residents to be clean and sober to be admitted. Okay, I'm assuming, Mary, that that's probably in Tucson. Um, let's see, Matt says, I know in some government housing programs that people can be removed from the program and blacklisted for using drugs. As someone in recovery, I'm aware relapse happens more often than we'd like. Is there consideration to forgive such a case if someone is seriously putting forth the effort to change? So hopefully when he comes back on, if he comes back on, we can ask him these questions. Um, let's see. Uh, I do want to just wait and see if he's going to come back. And so I will share some things with you that we've been working on. Uh, we have our calendar that is up and running, uh, and we've invited all of our liaise groups to go ahead and put any uh, events that they are having on that calendar. It's really cool. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure that you do. Yes, Mary says it is in Tucson. Let me see if I can put that link up there for the calendar. I think maybe Lindsay actually did it in the very beginning of the discussion. Oh, no, she didn't. Okay, so let me see if I can find it. Hold on one second. Because it's pretty nifty and I'm pretty excited about it. And it's your one-stop shop for all things uh, secular atheist agnostic and to get to know the people. Oh, there, she's got it already. There it is. Sorry. I'm trying to <laughs> hold Howard here, but there's the link. Okay. <laughs> uh, we might be ending early today. Let's see. Matt's asking, how would one go about volunteering time skills, time and skills to help perhaps in the construction aspect of these housing programs, or is that not something that's needed? These are such great questions. I really, really hope that he can join us so we can ask these questions. A um, couple more things while, I'm, while I've got you <laughs> as a captive audience, uh, we are also going to be starting um, discussions just about democracy, right? Like the, the inner workings of, um, you know, the ballot, the different dates that we need to know, whether it's primary date, signatures needing to be submitted, et cetera, et cetera, because 2024 is right around the corner, and I am already not looking forward to the inundation of uh, political ads, but we want to make sure that everybody is well informed and knows exactly when democracy is happening and who the major players are in our democracy, whether it's nonprofits or PACs or uh, anybody who's trying to help um, you know, make the world a better place through elections. And then we're doing that too, because as you may remember in 2022, we had a, a series of candidate forums for our school board candidates. So um, that'll be happening. We did them on Wednesday last year. So we may be doing them probably Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday nights, just depending, um, because of course, there's all kinds of other meetings going on and we don't wanna have meetings when the actual school board meetings are happening. Uh, let's see. Mars says helping folks learn the skills of housekeeping and home repairs would be good volunteer roles, perhaps. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree, Mars. Um, so I'm going to give it a few more minutes. If anybody has any questions about anything else uh, not related to housing, because like I said, uh, not my forte. Oh, good. Yay. Look at that. Man, can I fill time or what? It's a good thing I've got the gift of gab. <laughs> Okay, Howard is connecting. Good, you're back, Howard, because we had so many great questions. Um, Uh-oh, but now we can't hear you. Oh, he's connecting to audio right okay. now. Excellent. Yay, all right. Lost, lost the internet in my neighborhood for a while. <laughs> okay, <laughs> is so that what it was? Yeah. So, okay, so back to questions. I apologize. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you were the... Now I've kind of lost my uh, my place here. Let's see. So, so yeah, somebody asked the question about do you get evicted when you do drugs? And I, I think I answered that question. Yes, I think we're done with that question. Uh, there's some comments in here. Mary Ganapol, who's actually on our board, and she's based in Tucson, also with uh, Arizona End of Life Options. Uh, Old Pueblo Community Services does not require residents to be clean and sober to be admitted. Okay, that, so that's just more for your information kind of thing. Um, and the question that I had, you know, we have, there's some people on this call who, you know, I mean, you're speaking to a bunch of uh, secular people, humanists, atheists, agnostics, or maybe just like some generic brand of spiritual, or maybe even people of faith, but who want church and state to be separate. So, um, you know, you mentioned AA, 
AA does require that people, you know, um, you know, follow a higher power or whatever. And there are, you know, secular non-theistic um, recovery groups. And I'm just curious, would there be, you know, if, if somebody came to you and said, you know, hey, we'd like to be able to offer those as well as AA, is that something that there would be space for? Yeah, for sure. And again, keep in mind, I, I, the, the programming at the Oh no. <laughs> I talked about. So any they're they're the ones who make the decisions on the wraparound services such as that. So I but I've look, uh there's a lot of help that need that's that's needed. So I'm I'm certain they would take that kind of, of help. Sure. Well, and let's see. So Matt says, I know in some government housing programs that people can be removed from the program and blacklisted for using drugs. As someone in recovery, I'm aware relapse happens more often than we'd like it to. Is there consideration to forgive such a case if someone is seriously putting forth the effort to change? Yeah, again, th those are those are really great and specific questions that would probably can be better answered by the people who are providing those services at the but but again, if you look at the um, if you look at the nonprofits who are doing this kind of work, you mom, um, save the family, uh, U.S. Veterans Initiative, um, they're just they're they've been doing this for decades and they're really really good at it. And and frankly, um, they can all do more. And that's why we're trying to get more money for them to open up. And, and, and right now, the 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 uh, momentum is because apartments have gotten too expensive. Um, and so uh, what we're finding is more and more um, motels and hotels are being repurposed. And frankly, they're going to they're looking a lot better than what they used to. And it's really serving a cause. And um, I think you'll see more and more hotels being purchased by these great nonprofits to to do that kind of housing. You know, and I'm thinking too, given, you know, I was listening to something on NPR the other day and it was about um, since COVID, um, commercial real estate, uh, real estate has been struggling, you know, like because a lot of people now, so many more people are working from home. There's a lot of these vacant commercial real estate buildings. So I wonder if, if like rezoning them perhaps, or, you know, for some of these buildings that are sitting there empty would be an yeah. opportunity. Yeah, actually, that's what I do for a living. Um, I, and, and so, yeah, you're talking about the office building problem where mm -hmm. a lot of offices, um, in most cases, um, those buildings, uh, it's a really difficult and expensive conversion to go to residential. Uh, think of the plumbing issues that are required that aren't there. But in some cases, uh, it has worked. And um few cases, but in, in general, the the footprint for, for those large office buildings just, just doesn't work for residential housing. That makes sense. Yeah. Matt has a question. How would one go about volunteering time and skills to help perhaps in the construction aspect of these housing programs? Uh, or is this not something that's needed? Uh, are you talking about in terms of like actual uh, physical work or uh, help, helping with the, the uh, helping a nonprofit with the construction activities they're dealing with. I mean, if, if it's like a uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, most of those nonprofits don't do the, uh, Habitat for Humanity is like the only one who kind of does that, uh, which is a which is a, a a different kind of program than than we're funding. But um, I know there's always opportunities there in terms of um, um, the projects we're talking about. If again, um, it would be best to reach out to one or some of those nonprofits that I had on that list and see if they need help because okay. again most of these places will take all the help they can get. And and we, we can share that you know because there were an awful lot of there uh, information on those slides would it be okay for us to share those slides with our the folks please do please okay do. Great. fantastic okay more questions let's see uh, Mars has a comment about the housekeeping part helping folks learn the skills of housekeeping and home repairs would be good volunteer roles perhaps um and Matt says that they focus heavily on that in the Oxford House. Okay, let's see. Anyone want, that wants to volunteer as a secular recovery facilitator, I'm sure that would be welcome in a lot of spaces. Yeah, I agree with you, Mars. Um, let's see. Since many of these questions are for specific housing communities, where would one find a list? Okay, so that we'll, we'll pass that out with the uh, slideshow presentation. Okay, now Cindy has a question. Is there a lot of pushback 
from the public not wanting housing in their neighborhoods, the whole NIMBY thing, right? Yeah, I think the, um, I, I would say two things. Today, um, there's pushback on shelters, okay? Because if you think of shelters, it's very temporary, it's very uh, transitory, it's people coming and going. Um, there's pushback for, that's why the city of Phoenix has had a whale of a problem figuring out where to expand shelters. Um, you don't really see that pushback any longer for housing because the projects that, that are, are getting done look better now than they were before we took them over. And like I told you before, um, these projects look like any other apartment building. Uh, when I, 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 again, I've done these before with another, with another nonprofit. Uh, we had a little pushback early on from uh, city council. This was in Phoenix. Uh, but we, we purchased a foreclosed 80-unit uh, apartment building in Sunny Slope area of, of Phoenix, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. uh, when we purchased it, it was the green pool look. Uh, that's never a good look. Uh, and we made it a really nice project. And the then um, um, council person in our, that district was Bill Gates, who later became the um, county supervisor, um, he came to our ribbon cutting and he sat next to me and he said to me, um, I apologize for sort of not endorsing this from the beginning. And after taking a tour of this project and seeing what this looks like before and after, uh, you have my vote for every project you do going forward. So I think the political will is there for permanent housing. The problems that you see a lot has to do with sheltering. Mm -hmm. yeah, which I can, I mean, it, I can understand um, feeling differently about those two. Yeah. Things. yeah. Um, you know, and I'm sorry, because I, you know, while, while, while you're talking, I'm, I'm kind of monitoring some things and looking at the Facebook and stuff. So um, you may have answered this, but you talked about the, the rounding up thing. Is that, you know, like at the grocery store or whatever, is that already implemented? Like, are you already doing that? Or is this something that you're looking to do as you expand? No. So, so we, we are, well, two things. One, I, I, the, the Roundup, which was the PetSmart uh, example I gave, uh, that, that's just sort of the inspiration behind this. Look, look how much money they can raise doing this. The, the escrow donation program is copying the cash register program where you just, you want to donate a dollar. But we are actually pursuing, and if anybody on this uh, call has um, ideas or a, a network uh, avenue, um, some large business people have approached us recently to talk about doing a point of sale donation program. Um, think, of, think of if you could get APS and SRP or car bills, like every, you know, for every customer, a new customer, they donate something to the Arizona Housing Fund. Um, so we're, we're starting to look at and expand, expand sort of our reach to who can get involved with us with that sort of the point of sale program. That was just some new ideas brought to us by uh, some very well-connected people in the community who really like what we're doing and are actually seeing like, boy, this is a great vehicle for businesses and people to, to again, be part of that solution. So yes, to your, to your people who, are, who might know a business who wants to be involved with something like this, we would love to sit down and talk to them and figure out a way to, to get a, a business or company or corporation involved with some kind of point of sale program. That's great. Um, let's see, uh, Matt says perhaps construction supply businesses could be involved in point of sale fundraising. What a great idea. Yeah. Good idea. Um, let's see. And I don't see any more questions there. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. I had another question, but it left. I live in, oh, Joyce says I live in sunny slope. Hi, Joyce. Uh, and have heard the not in my neighborhood from some neighbors. Yeah, it, it happens everywhere. Um, well, with that, if anybody has any last questions, we might just be able to wrap this up early today. Um, Howard, I really, really appreciate the work that you're doing. I mean, you're you're changing lives and um, it's pretty incredible what you've been able to accomplish so far. So I look forward to much, much, much more success. I actually, uh, when, when I was uh, kind of trying to stretch the time a little bit because we lost you, I asked my friend who is a real estate agent if she um you know asks her clients you know or you know the buyers and sellers so so i will spread the word myself uh with all the friends that i have who are realtors so that they can offer that because who doesn't want to give a 25 dollars tax deductible donation to a good cause right 
Right. And, th and thank you. Uh, I, I'd say two, a couple of things. Again, follow us on social media because you can see the great stuff we're doing. Uh, if you have questions for us um, or ideas, uh, you can either contact us through the website. There's an info, which the emails go to me. And sadly, I would say uh, 19 out of 20 emails I get are from somebody who didn't really understand what our fund does. And, and it's a urgent email that says, my, hi, my name's Joe. I have three kids. My rent used to be 800. My rent wants 1500. I can't pay it. I'm going to be homeless in two weeks. Can you help? We actually, we have a standard response. We give them with resources dial, you know, two one one will give you help. But, but if you have questions, reach out, out to us through our website. If you're so inclined, if anybody likes what we're doing and so inclined to donate, we'd love that too. If you have any ideas, that's great too. So I really appreciate you giving me the time today. No, my, it's it's my pleasure. And uh, I just want to share with you some of the compliments that you're getting. Well, and there's an announcement from Mars. Thanks, Mars. Atheist helping the homeless Phoenix tomorrow morning near Burton Bar Library. So they're, they're going to be there, I take it, maybe in one of the rooms giving a presentation. I'm not sure exactly. Um, Sandra says, thank you, Howard, uh, for another hopeful Friday. Matt says, big thank you to Howard and everyone involved in this as someone who has experienced homelessness. This is an issue that hits close to home for me. And thanks, Jeannie and Secular AZ. Uh, and then Mars says, great job, Howard. Way to go getting the volunteers and donors on the board. Oh, and Mars says, with regards to the Phoenix or the Atheist Helping the Homeless, it is a giveaway to the neighbors in need. So check out the link above. Awesome. So make sure that you click that link. And, and thanks so much, Howard, for, for giving us a little bit of hope. Sometimes our talks are depressing, and this actually made us feel good, like there are good people doing good deeds in the world. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. I, take care. All right. Bye-bye.